Hello, my friends. Thank you very much for subscribing to our channel. ABCD is a square. As shown in the figure, it can be cut into six isosceles triangles. The scale in the schematic diagram doesn't show the real values, but it is certain that AEFG are on the same straight line, and BGHC are on the same straight line. Then, how big is each vertex angle of these six isosceles triangles? Why not give a try, and we will come back soon. Since the scale in the schematic diagram doesn't show the real values, we have no way to determine which angles are the vertex angles just by watching, instead, we have to figure them out one by one through analysis. First of all, there is a solid conclusion, if an interior angle of an isosceles triangle is an obtuse angle, then it must be the vertex angle. In the right triangle ABG, the angle BGA is acute. Then the angle FGH is obtuse. So it is the vertex angle of the isosceles triangle FGH. FG and GH are the legs. For the same reason, the angle FHC is the vertex angle of this isosceles triangle. And FH and HC are the legs. Next, let's focus on the right triangle ABG. We know that, the median to the hypotenuse of a right triangle is equal to half of the hypotenuse, that is to say, if E is the midpoint of AG, then the angle BEG, and the angle AEB will be the vertex angles of these two isosceles triangles respectively. But the question is, is this the only possibility? Let's take a close look. It is certain that, AB will not be shorter than BG. Next, let's check whether AB can be equal to BE in the triangle AEB. We plot the altitude BS to AG. If E locates between A and S, the angle AEB must be obtuse, and AB must be longer than BE. If E is between S and G. For the same reason, BG must be longer than BE. Then AB is even longer than BE. So AB and BE cannot be equal. Then is it possible that, AB is equal to AE? If they are equal, the angle AEB must be acute. And the angle GEB obtuse. Which must be the vertex angles of the isosceles triangle BGE. The angle GBE is complementary to the angle ABE, so it is equal to half the angle GAB. But in the right triangle ABG, as AB is not shorter than BG, the angle EGB cannot be smaller than the angle GAB. Then the two acute angles GBE and EGB cannot be equal to each other, so the triangle BGE cannot be an isosceles triangle. Therefore, AB cannot be equal to AE. E being the midpoint of AG is the only choice. Based on these conclusions, we can replot the figure more accurately. If we plot a straight line parallel to BC passing through point F, because GF is shorter than AF, it is easy to obtain that CF is shorter than DF by analyzing the two right triangles that DFC is divided into. So in the isosceles triangle CDF, is CD equal to CF? Or CD equal to DF? Let's start by looking at the first case. If CD is equal to CF, CD is also equal to AD. Then AD is also shorter than DF. AF plus CF is shorter than AB plus CB. Before learning the law of signs, this conclusion is actually not too easy to prove, but fortunately we have proved it in a previous video, so we won't repeat it here. In short, AF plus CF is also shorter than AD plus CD. Since CD is equal to CF, AF must be shorter than AD. In this case, any two out of the three sides of the triangle ADF are unequal. Then it cannot be an isosceles triangle. So CD cannot be equal to CF. The only possibility is then that, CD is equal to DF. And the angle CDF is the vertex angle. In this case, AD is also equal to DF. So that in the triangle ADF the angle ADF is the vertex angle. Once each vertex angle is determined, the task is more than half done. Next, we set the angle FCH equal to X. According to the fact, an exterior angle of a triangle, is equal to the summation of its two opposite non-adjacent interior angles, we have the angle FHG equal to twice X. For the same reason, the angle FGB is four times X. Opposite sides of a square are parallel, so the alternate interior angles DAG and FGB are equal. The vertex angle ADF is equal to 180 degrees minus twice the angle DAG. 
Angle CDF is its complement. And angle DCF is complementary to half of the vertex angle. The summation of angles DCF and FCH is 90 degrees. So X is equal to 15 degrees. Now, we can find each vertex angle, which are 150 degrees, 120 degrees, 60 degrees, 120 degrees, 60 degrees, and 30 degrees. Of course, an isosceles triangle with a vertex angle of 60 degrees is in fact an equilateral triangle. Thank you for watching. And see you next time.